Good afternoon, Chair Parker, Commissioner Mercer, and members of the Board of Environmental Protection and, and DEP staff. My name is Jen Gray, and I represent Maine Audubon and our 30,000 members and supporters. We're based out of Falmouth, and I live in Bath with my family. And I'm here in opposition to the proposed rules as drafted. And I also wanted to commend the, uh, com the Chair and the Commission for um, allowing the uh, unlimited time to hear concerns and comments. Um, it allows for more constructive um, back and forth and understanding about the concerns, so I appreciate that very much. Um, as you know, Maine Audubon has consistently opposed the various versions of the rules as proposed by the DEP because we ha felt they haven't been strong enough. The DEP has made some positive changes in this round of the rules, including um, increasing as access to interveners to the mining site, and we think that's constructive, and as well as other constructive changes. However, um, these rules are too important um, to just say they're better. We really need to get them right. There's too much at risk. Maine is a wonderful place that's blessed with precious natural resources that provide a rich foundation to our economy. And it's essential that these resources are adequately protected. The rules as proposed do not provide sufficient protection for our natural resources, particularly means aquatic resources, including our clean lakes, streams, groundwater, and world-class brook trout fishery, and don't provide ample protection of taxpayer dollars. In re reviewing the proposed rules, Maine Audubon keeps in mind that they are not just about one particular site in Aroostook County but would apply to the entire state. And I've attached um, the Maine Geological Survey's map. Some of you are new. Um, and this helps provide just some information about identification of volcanic and sedimentary deposits that are potential mining sites that are located across the state, including around Moosehead Lake, Cobscook Bay, and the western foothills. We need to make sure these rules are strong enough for the entire state. And I do know a lot of these sites happen to be around um, clean water bodies uh, that are important to our heritage as well as to our economy. The key we weaknesses of the rules, including allowing wet mine waste units during the operation of the mine. Most accidents that occur with tailings impoundments or wet mine waste units occur during the life of the mine, not after it's closed down. So while it's good to not allow it after, it's really important that it not be allowed during the operation as well. Furthermore, if wet mine waste units are barred after closure, um, they really need to be banned from the start. Converting from wet storage to dry is exceedingly challenging, if not impossible. Dry sh storage should be utilized from the start and should be utilized throughout the life. Should a tilling impoundment accident occur at the Ball Mountain site, for example, it would threaten the precious aquatic resources of the Fish River and the Fish River chain of lakes and beyond, including groundwater, brook trout habitat, etc. Allowing the location of uh, mining operations in floodplain and flood hazard areas makes no sense at all. These areas have been identified as being susceptible to flooding, locating a highly hazardous activity such as industrial metallic mineral mining in such locations is inviting disaster. The history of metallic mineral mining tells us that the pack taxpayers often let get left get holding the bill for cleanup. Maine has experienced this uh, situation in the past and we should learn from this experience. The full cost of cleanup, including a, after a large scale accident or disaster must be included up front to protect taxpayer dollars. Open vent mining in Maine could result in arsenic, lead, and other toxic chemicals contaminating our lakes, rivers, and streams and soils. Maine Audubon is also concerned about potential adverse impacts to wildlife and wildlife habitat and the rural economy. We urge the board to oppose the rules as written. And we thank you for your consideration. And I would just add that I'll submit some additional written comments once some specific suggested changes. Um, also, uh, some prior testimony regarding stakeholder process. I have found over the past 20 years representing Maine Audubon that constructive stakeholder processes can be really helpful in getting the, all the interested parties around the table and experts and talk back and forth as opposed to having those conversations happen in this type of setting or before the legislative committees. Um, the risks are too great. So, and also prior speakers talked about um, if there are statutory changes that the department feels need to be made in order to get these rules right, let's go to the legislature and have that conversation. 
because it is really too important. Um, and I also heard the comments regarding trust. Um, it is unfortunate that this process started many years ago. Um, for those of us who participated in that felt that it happened at the very last minute, perhaps with the intention of rushing things through. So we've started out with a level of mistrust. So that's a really important hurdle that we need to get past if we want to move forward as a state together. So I, I thank you again for your consideration. Thank you.